Now, the second question, why is there a minus 20 value uh, right of the saturated vapor line? How can a fluid be superheated at minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, that is a, a really fundamental question and it's a good one. Um, refrigerant is very special <laughs> and that's exactly why we use it. Imagine what's happening in an evaporator. You have a refrigerant that's entering as a saturated liquid, maybe not saturated, but it's a saturated mixture that's much closer to being a liquid than a vapor. There could be some vapor mixed in there. And it's, it's going to boil. It's gonna gather heat from whatever's on the other side of that coil, whatever we're removing heat from, could be the evaporator inside your refrigerator. It's 40 degrees in there. And yet this thing is going to collect heat and the, um, the refrigerant inside the evaporator is going to boil. So how could that be possible? That's the physical property of a refrigerant that it's able to do that. And that's exactly why we use refrigerants. That's, uh, you know, the refrigeration technology takes advantage of the fact that uh, there is such a substance that can behave in that way. And, and it's kind of similar if you think about water, right? We know that the sensible heating and cooling of water, liquid water, or even steam, it doesn't add or remove nearly as much heat when we just change the, the temperature, sensible heating or cooling, doesn't move the needle nearly as much as latent heating or cooling. It takes an enormous amount of energy to boil water. And it's the same with refrigerant. It takes a lot of energy to boil it, a lot more than just to warm it up or, or cool it down and change the, change the temperature. So um, we take advantage of the latent energy in the refrigerant by repeating that part of the cycle over and over again. Every time we go through the evaporator boiling, every time we go through the condenser condensing. So we just keep changing the phase of this thing as it goes around the cycle and we're able to transfer impressive amounts of energy in and out of it. And voila, we have um, refrigeration cycles and, and heat pumps. Another good example of that is if you think about uh, a heat pump outside, it's able to gather heat when it's zero degrees out um, it's, it's collecting heat from outside. It's very cold outside and yet it can collect heat and bring it inside. So yeah, that's, it's a great question. It's a fundamental question and it's really a property of refrigerants that we're able to boil them at very low temperatures. And, um, that's the magic behind the whole thing.